as we begin our 2023 celebration of Black History Month, we remember and celebrate our African American heritage. Four African Americans selected to be highlighted today are Frederick Douglass, born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, 1817 through 1895. He was an American social reformer, an abolitionist, an orator, writer, and statesman. After escaping from slavery in Maryland, he became a national leader of the abolitionist movement in Massachusetts and New York, becoming famous for his oratory and incisive anti-slavery writings. Next, Madam C.J. Walker, born Sarah Breedlove, 1867 through 1919. She was an African-American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and political and social activist. She is recorded as the first female self-made millionaire in America in the Guinness Book of World Records. Then the daughter of former slaves, Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, 1875 through 1955. She became one of the most important black educators, civil and women's rights leaders, and government official of the 20th century. The college she founded set educational standards for today's black colleges and her role as an advisor to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt gave African Americans an advocate in government. And finally, Dr. Carter G. Whitson, 1875, 1950. He was a scholar whose dedication to celebrating the historic contributions of Black people led to the establishment of Black History Month, marked every February since 1976. Woodson fervently believed that Black people should be proud of their heritage and all Americans should understand the largely overlooked achievements of Black Americans. Let us remember and celebrate our African-American heritage. To God be the glory.
every heart rejoice for this is the day that the Lord has made we will we must we shall rejoice and be glad why we're glad because the grace of God has been bestowed on us why are we glad because he has made us whole well, why are we glad because the spirit of the living God dwells in us. Why are we glad? Because he has promised us that we would be with him and have everlasting life. Amen. For God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As we open up this worship hour, this is the first watch of our worship. Our scripture reading will be led by Reverend Casey O'Kelly, Associate Minister, Mount Nemo Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia. And we will be led to the throne of grace by Reverend Larry Moultrie, Pastor, Pleasant Saline, Missionary Baptist Church, Centerville, Alabama. Amen. Amen. Most honorable and efficient pastor of this great church, Dr. Shill, and all the ministers up here. Psalms 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto me my prayer. From the end of the earth, 
will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Word of God for the people of God. To all you God beloved children. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise up here. Okay, that, that was good for Pastor Shields, but let's give the Lord a hand of praise up here. Now let's get the one that redeemed your hand of praise up in here. Somebody go, that's that, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, nah, there you go, there you go, there you go. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you now, Lord. First of all, we pause and say thank you. Thank you, sir. For being God and God all by yourself. Yes, sir. We thank our Father for being the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. Yeah. Know all things. We come to y'all, Father, just to tell you thank you. Before, you. before we ask you for anything, we want to tell you thank you for all things. Lord, we pause and ask you for forgiveness of our sins, created us a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within us. Now, Lord, doing everything that you required us to do, Lord, we feel somewhat grateful for going to the throne of mercy on this morning. Because we come, Lord, lifting this day unto you right now. Because it's all about you, our Father. It's all about you for seeing fit to plant one in this vineyard, to labor in this vineyard, to carry on the work of a pioneer has gone to come on home from glory, from, from the earth to glory. Now, Lord, bless Pastor Shears as he take the torch on. Yeah. And then, Lord, is somebody around this church today that needs you in a special way. Yeah. Lord, you know all about them now. You know us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Now, Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus to hear our cry, to tend to our moan right now in the name of of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless Pastor Lane this morning as he stands in his own shoes and proclaim your word unto this waiting congregation. And then, Lord, when it's all said and done, let you be the glory and let you be the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning to our members, friends, and guests. How
blessed we are that you have chosen to worship with us today as history has been made in the life of this grand old place. On behalf of my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Calvin Shears and church family, welcome to Historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We pray that you will feel the love and warmth that resonates in this grand old place, and we know it is the presence of the Lord. I invite you to return this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. for the installation service of our 19th pastor, the Reverend Dr. Calvin Shears. Thank you for worshiping with us, and remember, you are always welcome. Our announcement, please remember to secure your wristband if you have planned to attend the family dinner at the Carrick House. We will be led in our offering by our joint usher boy, followed by prayer from our own pastor, Shears. Good morning, church. Praise God from whom our blessings flow. We, the ushers, will be asking that you all will walk down. We have two ushers that's gonna bring the trays down and you will come to the sides, each side. You don't have to come from upstairs, we'll take care of that. So follow the directions of the ushers and we'll get through this quickly. Thank you and please don't diss it. Just come and bring your offering <laughs> kindly so we can get where we need to be. Praise God. Ushers, please come at this time. Both sides, please stand at this time. Follow direction of the ushers. Down the side aisles. Turn to your side aisle.
We ask, we ask, Lord, that you would bless this offering. Bless the giver. Bless all of those on the sound of my voice. Continue to be with us throughout the duration of this service, Lord. Because we can't beat you in giving. No how to, no matter how hard we try. So Lord, please bless us throughout the duration of this day. Let everything we do be pleasing in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' blessed name we do pray. And for the forgiveness of sin. been good to me down through the years the Lord's been good to me down through the years the Lord's been good to me you know the Lord's really been good he's been good to me well down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. You know the Lord's really been good. He's been so good to me down through the years. The Lord's been good. Oh, the Lord has down through the years. The Lord. Yeah. 
through the years the Lord's been good to me yes the Lord down through you know the Lord's been good I know the Lord on my track but the Lord been good to me you know but the Lord you know that Satan but the Lord you know the Lord Somebody don't know when to shout. I didn't say you was in this place. But the Lord is in this place. Amen, amen, amen. We are already on fire. And we're doing it all for the Lord. Amen. At this time, it's a privilege to me to introduce one of my best friends and best brothers. We've traveled dirt roads together. Literally, dirt roads. We preached in in houses, and we preached near out houses. We preached two or three. 
we've preached 200. We've shared this road together. But this is not a trip, it's a journey. And I am excited to have him with us today, Reverend Pastor Edward Lane, Rising Star Missionary Baptist Church, Opelika, Alabama. And if you don't know where that's at, it's near Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> right around the corner. And he's going to come in his own way. If you don't mind, just uplift your right hand and repeat after me. Pastor Lane, Pastor Lane. Preach, the word. preach the word. Let every heart say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. In this house, would you so kindly bow your heads with us? Most gracious God, we come before your presence once again with bowed heads and humble hearts. It is you, O oh God, who has brought us once again to this holy place. It is you who have kept us during the night from any hurt, harm, or danger. And woke us up this morning on due time. And started us on another day's journey. And as we look among ourselves this morning, we have so much to be thankful for. The portion of health and strength that you aided us and granted to us. That one writer said that it could have been the other way. But by your grace and your mercy that you looked beyond so many of our faults and looked again and blessed us with our every needs. It is you who have brought us down the dangerous highways and the highways. And we pause now even out of all to just say thank you. We thank you because we have so much to be thankful for. Pray now, O oh God, as we pray for this pastor and this Waiting congregation as they not come today to hear from me, but they came to hear from you. For we know you're still in the cleaning up business. Able to make a bad man good and a good man better. Pray now that you have your way in this house. Uh, for truly, I empty all myself and pray that all of you come into me. Forgive me now my sins on me as one of your children. And we will be all to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we solely pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank him for truly blessing us once again to grant to come to the house of prayer one more time. We echo the words of the Apostle Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration by saying, Lord, it's good to be here. I did not say that for introduction because as I boarded a plane a couple of days ago and me and my wife journeyed here in the air, I passed by many hospitals and I could have been there. Passed by a few nursing homes and convalescing homes, and I could have been there. But if the truth be told, you could have been there also. <laughs> but by the grace of God, that God has once again spared us to come to the house of prayer one more time. We are grateful and thankful for truly blessing a man to. Grant us favor to come this way, to be a part. And I must first, Paul, to say that the hospitality, the best has yet to be told. I truly, amen, I'm grateful and thankful, amen, and truly because I learned that people don't have to be nice, and they don't have to be nice to you. But I'm grateful, me and my wife are grateful, and I told my wife, I said, we take call home and tell them sell everything. <laughs> uh, 
and, and I come up here and sit up on the pastor sheet. Amen. The hospitality. Amen. Amen. You made me feel like I was somebody. And I'm grateful. And, and I was always taught from a child. Mama always said to tell folk, thank you. And I'm grateful in a day and thankful to God. And I'm so happy to be again with my good friend, Pastor Shears, and to see these ministers and fellow yokemen of the gospel. But truly today, this is some still serious business. I, I, I came, I didn't come just to preach. I'm great. You have a preacher and a pastor that can preach and will preach. Amen. You, you, you missed the claw at your hand. Amen. And I'm grateful and thankful to God for this blessing today to come. And I know you smoking me over wondering, can I preach? I, I'm smoking you over wondering, can you pray? Amen. For preaching and praying goes together. If I'm willing to pull, I wonder, will you push? But truly, I thank God, amen, and, and grateful and thankful to the Lord, amen, for having this opportunity. And I want to, amen, I listen to that choir. Come on, give them a God bless you. Someone said they sound real good. They sound all right. Won't you come up here and help them? Amen. But truly, we all are choir members. And we are delighted, amen, to do so. Won't you, true enough, want to preach this morning, want to be helpful in preaching, amen, on, on prayer hymn this morning. I know you've heard of Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help that I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, tell me where shall I go? Father, I stretch my hand to Let's pray. 
Back home, we say after that, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Come on, help me, y'all. I will trust in the Lord till I die. Let me hear you this way. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Somebody need to know that. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Anybody going to help me this morning? I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I for it is now time to come to the table back home when mama would call us to the table she tell us that we need a plate and it's truly if you can furnish the plate the Lord can furnish the food for it is true this morning that some are on milk and others on meat. But you must need a plate. Uh, come go with me for a few moments. There will be two scriptures outlined this morning. And truly in Proverbs 13 and 15. And then we must journey to Matthew 10 and 22. There you will find, my beloved, that we have learned for the custom, the 13th chapter of Proverbs and the 15th verse, Old Testament scripture, and tie into Matthew 10 and 22. If you have it, acknowledged by saying amen. amen. And it speaks on this wise. The 15th verse, and I'm reading from the King James Version, and there may be some new revised standards, or may be others. But it speaks on this wise. Good understanding give it favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. And then, my beloved, if you would journey to Matthew 10 and 22, Jesus is speaking. And what did he say? And I'm glad you asked. And ye shall be hated upon all men. For my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. 
you, you may be seated. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray this morning that all in the house is on speaking terms. For I have learned in my travel, Dr. Woods, that everyone at church is not in church. Especially when the church is not in you. Uh, but if you are on speaking terms this morning, would you so kindly turn to the person beside you and just say, good morning. <laughs> Some of y'all still looking at me. <laughs> and the truth be told, that's probably the most some of us have said, all morning. <laughs> But if you will, again, I want to preach a subject and a theme this morning, Dr. Shears, if it's truly okay. I want you to turn again and say, good morning. Good morning. Turn again and say, neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor. Or neighbor. The preacher's going to preach about men out of bounds using the sub-thing 99, 99 and a half won't do. Want to talk about that this morning. 99 and a half won't do. The text word this morning that we are to discuss and to afford a fold this morning is the word called transgressor. For there are two words, Dr. Shears, that we that we can help define what a transgressor is. These words are known as boundaries and limits. For to transgress is to go beyond the limit or to exceeding the boundary. The limit is the point of the line where something ends and cannot be passed. For in order to transgress, you have to go beyond the points. You have to go beyond the limit or to exceeding the boundary. I'm reminded of a story that was told of a man who lost control of his car on a countryside highway. And the story is told as he was told he was lost control of his car. He got out of the car proclaiming that God was with him. And as the fellow police officer arrived, he looked at him and said to him, Brother, how fast were you going? He said, I was running approximately around 65. He said, well, sir, when you pass the corner down there, there's a sign that says 35. That's where God got out of your car. That's called exceeding the limits. That's called going beyond the boundary. Could the truth be told this morning that some of us are passing and running and traveling at a fast pace of time and don't realize that God had gotten out of some of our cars. We must understand this morning that God has a boundary in everything. For God, of everything that he made, he made a balance in whatever he made. For even in creation of everything that God made, the Bible says that God made a boundary and a limit in everything that he made. For if you remember, when he made the sun, the sun would rule the day. The moon would rule the night, and each one of them never conception between themselves because the sun always took care of the day, and the moon always took care of the night. It helps us to understand that a boundary and a limit, even when God made the Garden of Eden, he put a boundary and a limit to whatever he made. If you remember in the Garden of Eden, there was a tree of knowledge. He did not 
put the tree in the front of the God. No, he put it in the back of the God. But God put it in the midst of the God. God told Adam the day that thou eat of this tree, the way would get hard. The road would get rough. The going would get tough. And the hills would be hard to climb. It helps us to realize that God is a balance to everything he made. Where there's a front, there's a back. Where there's an end, there's an out. Where there's a heaven, there's a hell. Everything God made, there was a balance to whatever he made. Well, my beloved, this morning, this term, out of bound comes from a college game, which we call football. This morning we can learn some spiritual truth here in this term by the term out of bound because it comes from this game we all love so much. The game is played between two contestants. And each of these teams have 11 men on that plays on a level field called the gridiron. This field is divided by white lines, which five yards in the bell, which have two end zones, and each side has of uh, the field. This morning, I want you to picture in your mind that there's 10 yards between each interval, 50 yards on one side and 50 yards on the other side, and 50 plus 50 equals. Well, Paul, in the spirit, saw men running in the sport arena when he said in Hebrew 12, Dr. Shears, he said, let us run with patience the race that set before us. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay every side away the sin which does so easily beset us. Paul was saying that we are in the arena of life and the church sang the song and our forefathers that we're singing today, we are running, Lord, and we must know that 99 and a half won't do. Now this morning, the most important focus here, this morning, please agree, this is teamwork. And I just stopped by to share with you. It's not how we look in here, but it's how we look when we leave here. The team, according to Webster, team is a group of people that are working together, and it takes effort. And effort has to have some action. Along with the effort, many of us want some action, but we don't put forth no effort. It sounds like it's tight, but it's right. We want to be on the team of God. There must be some action because talk is cheap. A lot of us can talk it, but can you walk what you talk? The football team is just like the church of the living God. What we have to realize is the church is just like a team, and we all are members of the same team. The Bible lets us know that we are members of the same body. Notice, if you will, I compared this the other day, the church with this team. There is team must, first of all, be well organized as you compare it with the church of the living God. So let us look at it this morning. I want to dissect this, this contest that as I compare the church with this team. Well, there's seven line men. There's a left end, there's a right end, there's a left guard, there's a right guard, there's a left tackle and a right tackle, and there's a center, and in the backfield, there's two halfback, and there's one quarterback. Now, membership is possible. How is it possible? Well, the words, first of all, say we must be physical fit, properly trained. And we also must be well suited. Now, when I compare 
this this morning, my brothers and sisters, to the church of the living God. John 3 tells us that membership is possible because spiritual victory, you must be born again. Then I looked at it, but from the context, Matthew 11 and 28 lets us know along that 2 Timothy 2 and 16 that we have to be properly trained. He said, come and learn of me. And then thirdly, Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 13, he reminded us that we must be properly suited. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Now, scoring is possible because you must, first of all, get the ball to the opposite side of the field. You have to get the ball down the field. Now, the way that the church this morning is all about, members must have a goal, but some of us have the wrong goal. Some of us just want an officer in the church. That's the wrong goal. Some of us just want to be members in the church. That's the wrong goal. We must have the right goal. I'm concerned about some of our folks in our churches. Because the only thing they want to do is see and to be seen. They love the style and profile. Not realizing that it's not what you say, but it's what you do. Now let, let us look here that we not only have one goal, but we have to have the right goal. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, let all things be done decent. Help me somebody. He said decent and in order. If something is in order, it's decent. If something is decent, it is in order. But we must learn to be decent and in order. So I hear the Lord saying to Peter to organize this team. You can record reading in Acts 6 and 3, the Lord told Peter to look out among you. Find seven me. Everybody says seven. These seven men are the line men on the football team. These men here have to be, first of all, born again. They must be full of the Holy Ghost. And the biggest problem we have, men on the line, but they have not been born again. We must realize that they don't have the Holy Ghost. In the lives that the line men in the church are the officers. You call them deacon here. They are men on the line. And then in the back field, that's where the ministers are and the associate is. And the pastor, this morning we know Pastor Shears is the quarterback and the pastor of the church. As well as we have cheerleaders with choir members and usher attendants. But all of these make up the body of Christ. We have spectators and agitators and instigators. We have all of those in the church, but they all come together. You must know, first of all, your function, and you must know your place. So first, this morning, I want to deal with the line men. Because the line men are the men on the line they are where the action take place. Well, help us, Reverend. Tell us, help us. I'm glad you asked me to help you. Well, the line men on the line, they need to know that there are some things they tackle and some things they go. They need to know that there are some things they need to, to know this morning that they never tackle their quarterback. Y'all ain't got quiet in here. No, no, you don't touch the quarterback. The, the, the rule number one is the problem in our church today is too many of our officers there are guilty of tackling what they're regarding instead of guarding what they ought to be tackling. God said in this word, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. 
the line men are down front and in the back are the men which are the ministers. But the rule is, Dr. Wood, before we can go anywhere, the line men must assume their position. See, the line men have to, have to, first of all, they have to get down. They have to stay there until the count is given. But my problem is a lot of folks say, I can't see that. You can't see what the pastor sees. You can't do what the pastor do because God gives the vision to the pastor. I've heard people talk about what they see. But you can only see what's in front of you. You can't see because there's sometimes the plays have to be changed. And I've never seen a tackle change the play, but only the quarterback can change the play. One of our rules is everyone comes to looking to have a good time. There are team supporters who are never letting anyone or anyone talk about their team. See, that's where we are this morning, Pleasant Green. We should always have the unity of helping one another. You should never let anyone talk about your team or talk about your pastor because you need to realize that you're all on the same team. We come to encourage members on the same team. The Bible said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There are some rules here. We must understand that we must always stay on our side of the field. See, drinking ain't our side of the field. Gambling and stealing and won't say amen. That's not your side of the field. Your side of the field is to love and help and look out for one another. I don't hear nobody saying nothing up in here. God told us to be in this world, not of this world. Now we must look again at the field because remember, the field is divided in half and one side is 50 yards and the other side is another 50 yards. The referee tells everything that goes on, which is the Holy Spirit. We must remember first of all that 50 yards is in here and 50 yards is out there. Remember the field because any time the play is given, they must first huddle up on the field. And you know there's a danger there because I've learned in my pastoral ministry that there's too many hurdles in the church. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. We got a huddle in the missionary. We got a huddle in the trustee. We got a huddle in, in the deacon ministry. We have a huddle in the choir. But there's only one quarterback. There's only one huddle in the church. We must learn that we all only have one huddle. There's only one in the church. Now, if you look at this one more time, you'll see how this comes to a very flourishing. You can see that the field is 50 yards on one side. And there's 50 yards on the other side. 50 and 50 equals 100. Well, in my own spiritual imagination, Dr. Shields, I focus on God's plan for farewell and salvation that he organized a plan for 11 men selected for this plan. And the record showed that there was two sides, which was two teams, would play on this field. There was a side of evil and a side of good. On the side of evil, the lion men were in there, jealous, jealousy, confusion, adultery, disobedience, selfish, and lust. 
And in the backfield was drunkenness, lie, murder, and the quarterback was hatred. God set this plan in order. On the side of good was righteousness, faith, peace, hope, patience, meekness, trumpetness, and joy. In the backfield was long suffering, truth, goodness, and the quarterback was love. If you help me here this morning, the game was kicked off when the devil was kicked out of heaven. And the Bible said that the Lord, that one third of the angels came down with heaven. And my Bible tells me, the Lord said, I need a runner uh, that will run for me. You remember the Bible said Adam was the first runner. That Adam picked up the ball on the one yard line. And you know the Bible says sin knocked him out of bounds. Uh, when he ate the forbidden fruit. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> then the Lord called Noah. <laughs> you remember Noah? <laughs> the man that preached one sermon. <laughs> that he said, it's going to rain. <laughs> you better get ready. <laughs> and you better in mind. <laughs> But you know the Bible said, uh, when Noah got off the ark, uh, he got drunk, didn't he? Uh, and drunkness knocked him out of bounds. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, then the Lord called Abraham. Uh, Abraham, the father of faith, uh, picked up the ball at the 20-yard line. Uh, and he ran uh, until the line knocked him out of bounds. Uh, how did he lie? Uh, he told that his wife was his sister. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, lying knocked him out of bounds. Uh, then the Lord called Jacob. Uh, you remember Jacob? Uh, Jacob, uh, the trickster. Uh, don't you realize uh, that whatever you do in the dark, uh, won't it come to the light? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, Tricking, uh, not Jacob, uh, out of bounds. Uh, then the Lord called David. Uh, David, uh, you remember David? Uh, a man after God's own house. Uh, he picked up the ball uh, at the 40 yard line. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, David could ruin uh, in the spirit. Uh, but you know what happened to David? Uh, a Adultery uh, knocked him out of bounds uh, when he took another man's wife uh, and had him killed. Uh, then the Lord called, uh, he called Solomon, uh, the wisest man that ever lived. Uh, can I go in this year? Uh, Solomon uh, picked up the ball uh, at the 45 yard line. Uh, he ran uh, until adultery. Uh, Knocked him out of bounds. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, anybody here know? Uh, man was stuck uh, at the 50 yard line. Uh, can I close in here? Uh, at 50 yard line. Uh, they had a thing called uh, halftime. Uh, halftime. Uh, that that wasn't the word. Uh, heard from the Lord. Uh, halftime. Uh, for 400 years, uh, half time, uh, when one word heard, uh, half time, uh, man was stuck uh, on the 50 yard line, uh, the sooner or later, uh, God uh, called a meeting uh, in glory, uh, he called in uh, 
Amen. Justice. Uh, justice set down. Uh, and time uh, set by justice. Uh, and mercy set by time. Uh, I heard justice say, uh, calling me in uh, to the judgment. Uh, I heard time say, uh, I second the motion. Uh, mercy say, uh, wait a minute. Uh, give me uh, blessings. Uh, I'll go down uh, and redeem man. Uh, I'm finna get ready to leave you. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, anybody know? Uh, it's found in John, uh, the first chapter, uh, the sixth verse. Uh, that was a man uh, sent by God. Uh, name was John. Uh, John uh, picked up the ball uh, at the 50 yard line. Uh, John ran the ball uh, until they caught John. Uh, but I heard John say, uh, There coming a man uh, whom I'm not. Uh, Worthy uh, to unlash his shoe. Uh, anybody here know uh, before they got John uh, and cut his head off? Uh, John uh, elaborated the ball uh, to a man named Jesus. Uh, anybody here know uh, Jesus uh, picked up the ball uh, at the 55 yard line uh, at 60. Uh, he healed the sick. Uh, at 70, uh, gave sight to the blind. Uh, at 80 yards, uh, took two fish. Uh, by far low. Uh, at 85, uh, stopped the funeral session. Uh, at 90 yard line, uh, one Friday evening uh, on a hill called Cal. Uh, we uh, have mercy, Lord. Uh, at 95, uh, they hung him high. Uh, Stretched him wide uh, at 96. Uh, he stayed in the ground. Uh, anybody here know uh, at 98? Uh, stayed there uh, all sad tonight. Uh, that you see, uh, I told you uh, that 99 uh, and a half won't do. Uh, the story don't end there. Uh, tell me, uh, early, uh, y'all still. Uh, early, uh, me pleasant green. Uh, early, uh, early, Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, with all power. See ya, see ya, see ya. Turn your neighbor 99 and a half won't do. Two things. Two things. The Lord told me to tell you, Dr. Shears, the grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. He told me to tell you to run on. See what the end gonna be. For she is that's an end waiting for all of us. But 99 and a half, it just won't do. Huh? Back home in Lower Alabama, I'm mindful of those two words. Your grace and mercy brought me I'm living this moment because of you. Oh, and I want to thank and praise you too. Oh, 
your grace and mercy for me. Can you help me say it? Your grace and for me. I'm living this moment. I'm living this Because, and I want to thank, praise and praise, your, your grace and love. As you stand this evening, justice demanded that I should die. But I heard Grace say, this is what he said, no, 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 we already paid the price. But now I see your grace and mercy rescue for me. You hear me say, your grace and Let's give the word a great big hand. The invitation is extended. That may one who want to come back to Christ, want to come and be a member of this great, great church. Let us all stand. Doors of the church is open. Amen. I want to be on that team. Everybody say Everybody say Come on, if you're on the team, everybody say, oh yeah, amen, come on, everybody say, everybody say, everybody say, come on, yeah. 
listen. Going to heaven, send it. God bless you, my sister. Anybody? Going to heaven, send it. Going to heaven, send it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody say. Everybody say, yeah. Now listen, now listen. Just the preacher, all the preachers say, all the preachers say now. Yes, sir. All the preachers say, amen now. All the ladies say, hey, hey, hey. all the ladies say, God bless you. Say, hey. yeah. Now, me and that show about to do it. All the men say, hey. Come on, put those hands together, together in this place. Come on, give the Lord a sacrificial praise offering. For the Lord scored a touchdown one Sunday morning. I wish I had a witness in here. If the Lord been good to you, you ought to throw your hands up and shout it out with me. Touchdown! care what the devil say. We on a winning team. Amen. And we've already won. Amen. Victory is already mine. Amen. Amen. We have with us Anita Crawford. Stand please ma'am. She's coming by letter. Y'all cut that mic off please. She's coming by letter. New Saint John. Chicago, Illinois. Hey, uh -uh. See, somebody didn't know when to shout. She's coming from New St. John, Chicago, Illinois. Come on, Anita Crawford. you would follow the rules and regulations of those 66 books Amen. because anything else would be out of bounds. And we want to stay in the contextual structure of those 66 books. And it governs and rules not only the church but our private houses and homes. Thank God for his word. And we invite you to be a part of in ministry in this church. Use your gifts and your talents that God have bestowed upon you that you would create a healthy body in this place. And we thank God for you. 
and we praise God for you coming to be a part of the historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. I need one of my sisters, one of my sisters. I need one of my sisters. Amen. Sister Taylor is going to be your mentor. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Pastor Lane. Brethren, you may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Lane, for that dynamic sermon. That message hit all of us. Amen. Now, here's an I in family, but not in team. Amen. Thank God we're part of God's greatest team. And we thank you for coming today. We're getting ready to leave and go to the carriage house where they'll be serving us food. And we'll be back at this place at 1.30 for our installation services. You know that we're asking all our members to to participate in our procession and uh, just make this a wonderful day, not just for us, but for the Lord. And the Lord is pleased that was an addition to the church today. Amen. 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 We thank God for all of you at this time. We just thank God for all these ministers. Amen. Who will be back with us. Amen. All of us have traveled these back roads of Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. Amen. And God has brought us a long way. And we just thank God for all these ministers. Give them a hand. Amen. And this one right here, stand up. Give him a hand. Amen. Amen. This is my pastor here. Amen. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for God and him. So I thank you, Pastor Woods. Amen. For being a great shepherd. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor Lane to come back with our benediction. And then I think we're going to be escorted out by our ushers. Am I right, ushers? All right, they're going to escort us out, and we are headed to the carriage house. Make sure that you have your wristbands on, the VIP section, and we'll return back to this place as soon as us get through eating. Amen. We're going to get collard greens and chicken and barbecue and cornbread. And uh, we're going to lick our fingers and come on back to church. Amen. Don't eat too much where you won't go to sleep. Amen. Get your goat plate. Put it in the car. Amen. Till you get home. No fellowshipping. Don't stand around and talk. We on a timetable here. Reverend Owens reminded me we on a timetable. So Pastor Lane gonna come give us our benediction. May we stand. Let us stand. God bless you, Pastor Shears. We thank God for you. Would you bow your heads? Lord, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for the touchdown of another soul being added to the body of Christ. Pray now your blessings upon this church, this pastor. And we pray this afternoon for Dr. Woods, who will bring us a holy and powerful word. Pray now, O oh God, as we go to fellowship, bless the food that we're about to receive. Bless all the blessings that you continue to bless us with as we give you all the grace. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest abide, be with thee now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say it together. Say amen. Oh.